Did you want to go to Cleveland? Where did you want to get drafted? Mm. Where did I want to get drafted? Yeah. Probably Dallas. But I love Jerry. I loved getting a chance to go to sporting events in that stadium and cross mm -hmm. in circles with him. I loved getting the opportunity as a college Texas A&M kid to walk into that box and like rub shoulders with the honcho. Yeah. The guy. Yeah. So like I love that. And 16th pick of that draft was Dallas. And I remember the anticipation in Radio City when that pick was coming up and I had my fingers crossed under that table the entire time. Please. Let me go put that star on my helmet. Looking back now, thank God that it didn't happen because I wouldn't be sitting here today. You're saying that you wanted to go to Dallas, you were hoping Dallas draft you, but you said you're glad you didn't go to Dallas because? I think knowing what I was doing in Cleveland, how hard it was for me to party and move and do these kind of things. If you would have put me in a landscape of, that was my backyard that I knew, you know, I'd been driving from College Station up to Dallas when there wasn't nothing going on in College Station. Right. So it was something I was familiar with. I know who I was hanging around at that point in my life. And I think it would have been just an absolute disaster to the point of <clears throat> it wouldn't have been suicide that, that would have been the issue. It would have been drinking and driving. It right. would have been taking a bag from somebody you shouldn't take it from and just boom could have been over in an instant. So I think I know myself well enough to be able to say that it would have been bad in its own right. And luckily, thankfully, you know, it didn't happen, even though at that time, it's what I wanted. What were your study habits like in Cleveland? How often did you study? Did you watch tape? Did you study the game? Uh, when you're in meetings, did you, were you attentive? What was Johnny's study habits, practice habits like? I would say, um, you know, Kyle Shanahan was the most detailed person that I had ever seen in my life. And mm -hmm. I thought Cliff Kingsbury was really, really good. But Shanahan took it to a different level. Mm -hmm. He could coach 11, 12 positions on the offense. Um, detail, hat placement, hand placement, every single thing. So our meetings and things were incredibly detailed. My quarterback room was not a home for me because of Brian Hoyer. Brian Hoyer had been waiting on opportunity to be able to go really provide for his family, get an opportunity. And he saw how much of an upper hand he had on me. Mm -hmm. And he didn't hold back when it came to that. So there was instances in the quarterback room early on where I would ask the same question a couple of times and he'd be at the head of the table and go, again, we're doing this again. Wow. Keep him out of it, right? right? Let's just cut that off. And I don't have a bad word to say about Brian Hoyer. That is just fact of what happened in that room. So when that happened. So if we were to ask another quarterback that's in that room. Go ask Connor Shaw. Go ask Connor Shaw, who played at South Carolina and was with us in Cleveland. Go ask him how Brian Hoyer was in that room. Go ask Dow Loggins how he was in that room. And it's okay. But at that point in time of where I was, and I'm the franchise guy, I could have used a little help, a little especially when they knew what I was doing. And I've said this before in the past, and people have said, why don't you take self-accountability for what it was and you not putting in the work? I didn't know what work like that was. I didn't know what the grind was because I was great at Texas A&M without it. So a sense of entitlement comes in that I can do it the same way because I don't know any better. So when you have that going on in the quarterback room, then I just do this. I ain't speaking. If I question something, I'm not asking. I'm embarrassed, right? I'm getting dogged by a guy who's supposed to be my teammate. Mm -hmm. When I don't know, I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know what cover three is. You know what we did at A&M? If that linebacker's tucked in and Swope's faster than him, bang, I'm throwing the bubble and he's down the sideline. Mm -hmm. I wasn't looking at safeties. I'm not looking at one high, two high rotation. My mind didn't work that way from a football player perspective. And then when I'm going into my safe space quarterback room, I'm getting, pfft. so I'm not saying a word. Now I'm struggling. Now I'm getting behind. Now I don't know the detail of the plays because I'm not going home and dialing it in even more. Right. In the building, I studied film. Okay. I wanted to watch these Rex Grossman clips of Washington and Shanahan. I wanted to watch RG3 2012 season. I wanted to see 
how you do this stuff. And I watched it. Did I grind it the way that Peyton Manning does? Absolutely not. I didn't even know that was a thing until Josh McCown got in the building the next year. And when Josh McCown came in, the shift in that room went through the roof of positivity. When I got there, he comes up to me and he goes, you want to be a great quarterback? I go, yeah. He goes, tie a string to the end of my backpack and you can follow me around wherever you want and I'll show you what it takes to really be a quarterback in the NFL. 